Hi, it's Greg Hurrell with another Vim screencast. Uh, and this one is about key logging. Uh, not key logging in the steal somebody's password sense, uh, but rather key logging in the understand your own habits sense. Um, so to provide a bit of context about how I came to this problem, um, this is something that I might've mentioned in the Colmac screencast. I can't remember now, but I'll, I'll just give the quick rundown anyway. I used to use the QWERTY layout and I wasn't happy with it. And so one of the things I looked at doing was using a genetic algorithm to basically train a model, um, feeding it in a corpus of all the text that I'd typed and spitting out an optimal keyboard layout that was hand tailored just for me. Now, one of the problems with this approach was that the corpus that I was going to use to train it uh, was a collection of my email and program code that I'd written. Uh, but as a Vim user, the key presses that I used to produce that program code didn't actually get reflected in the buffer because as you know, a lot of the manipulations that you do of the buffer in Vim are in normal mode. Um, and sure, they change the text, but they don't actually reflect the keys that you pressed in any kind of direct inferable way. Um, and so I figured that if I was going to adopt this, you know, bespoke one of a kind layout that was made just for me, there wasn't really any point unless I had a truly high quality corpus. Um, and that meant I would have to key log all of my key presses, possibly for weeks to get enough volume to make this thing a good quality corpus. And I wasn't patient enough to do that. Um, I was coming, I was about two weeks away from the end of my parental leave. Uh, and I had to learn Colmac and get up to speed before I got back to work. So I just switched to Colmac. Nevertheless, I did go back and implement the key logging because I was super curious to see what my habits were in Vim. Um, and so tonight I'm gonna show you how you could do the same. Um, and so I was previously looking for this. Um, if you go back through my dot files, um, you can see here there's a commit where I remove the key logging uh, once I had done the experiment. So I'm gonna revert this commit so you can see it in action. Uh, but before I do, uh, I wanted to show some of the summary results that I uh, basically had extracted by the end of it. Um, in terms of n-grams, um, unigrams are sequences of one key press, digrams are sequences of two key press, and trigrams are sequences of three key presses. With these numbers here, there were 48 unique unigrams recorded, a little over 2,000 diagrams, and 31,000 trigrams over a period of some time. Um, and in terms of non-unique, just raw counts, I produced nearly a couple million key presses while I was collecting this data, um, and 1.6 million diagrams and 1.4 million trigrams. Um, and if you look down here, the top 10 unigrams were, I mean, unsurprisingly, uh, space for me, because I use space as my leader key and it's pretty common anyway. Um, J and K are pretty high because of Vim. Um, e is high because of the English language, being the most popular in the English language and so on. Um, when you start getting down into the diagrams, it gets even more kind of damning. Um, you can see that I rely on JJ and KK pretty heavily. I should be using relative line numbers more in Vim. Uh, and likewise, trigrams, even worse, triple J and triple K are my most common trigrams by a long, long shot. Uh, um, likewise, NNN is pretty common and that's because of search where I'll just repeatedly mash N as I'm moving through a file. Um, so we wind up with 10,000 triple N trigrams, uh, which is in the number three position. Uh, then the first real trigram is space th, which is probably, you know, the beginning of the word the, this, that, those kind of things coming in at about 9.3K. Um, so I found that really interesting experiment to run. Uh, I'm now gonna revert the commit so you can see what you would have to do if you wanted to uh, implement the same thing. Uh, so there it is. This will claim there's a conflict, but there isn't really because I previously resolved it before. But let's just confirm that. Uh, and you'll see here that there are no conflict markers and the key log is in place. So uh, basically uh, this is a Hammerspoon config. I probably should have mentioned that I'm using Hammerspoon to do this. Uh, Hammerspoon uh, is something that I've talked about in a bunch of other screencasts, uh, but it enables you to provide all sorts of config custom configuration. And one of the things that you can do is set up a so-called event tap. And that basically means that all keyboard events flowing through the system can go through this tap and you can either intercept them, modify them or inject new events. Um, in the case of the keylogger, all I wanna do is observe them as they go through and record them to a SQLite database, which Hammerspoon conveniently also enables you to write to. 
Um, so basically we have this keylogger module, we init it, um, and just in here I'm going to show you what the keylogger does. Uh, it's basically pretty simple. Uh, it basically looks at the stream of characters that are coming through and uses timers to determine whether or not uh, an acceptable interval has passed since the last key press. If it is a small enough time, it effectively considers it to be a run of key presses and records entries in either the unigram, diagram, or trigram table as appropriate. Um, so this is just Lua, it's not rocket science, um, and you can see uh, a little bit of SQL there uh, is used to actually do the insertion or the update into the tables. So let's restart Hammerspoon because it probably didn't actually restart when I checked out that uh, new rev. So that should reload the config and of course it didn't work. And why is that? Module Carabiner not found. <sighs> Because when I resolved the merge conflict, I didn't resolve it correctly. Because I don't have carabiner config in here anymore. Okay, so let's try reloading again. Cool, so you can see it loaded the event tap SQLite extensions. Great. Um, and it is probably logging my keystrokes as we speak. So I'm just going to hit J and K a few times and type something in here. The rain in Spain. Okay, so there are some key presses. Uh, let's go and look at the Hammerspoon directory where we should now have a nice little SQLite database, and we do. So now we're gonna see if I can remember how to use SQLite. Uh, basically, it comes with a command line tool. You can give it a path to a file, and it should let me know what tables are there. Cool, there are the tables, so, so let's select everything from trigrams and there was nothing there because there is some throttling if I now remember there is throttling uh, where it's not actually writing to the database every uh, every time there's a key press for obvious reasons um, let's see if I can go back to where that was so it's a uh, key logger and somewhere in here there's going to be some timer related code that's going to Key handler, we've got a timer. Write to the DB every minute. So if you can be bothered waiting a minute, we should see some results in this table. Ugh. Now there are results in the table, yay. Um, so those are the diagrams. Uh, so let's select from trigrams. So you can, uh, and let's order it by order. I can't remember the. I can't remember the column names. Okay, and that also didn't tell me the. If this were my SQL, I would remember how to do this, but this is a way to get the actual column names, uh, and it's going to have to be looking in my in my definition of the table count. Okay, select everything from trigrams, order by count descending. Let's just get the top 10. So you can see in that little short session, cell is my, my most frequent trigram. Uh, so in the end, uh, this did not prove useful enough that I wanted to keep it around. I wonder if that works. That does. That's lovely when things work. And I've got Vim running somewhere. Um, what else have I got? Yeah, so uh, in the end, I, I got rid of this because uh, it had a, an unfortunate side effect with Carabiner elements, which I use. Um, as you can see here, I have a link to an issue. Um, and basically what was happening was that sometimes modifier flags uh, events were coming in the wrong order, which was causing things to not work quite right. So I basically reported this um, and it turns out that the lag introduced by events flowing through the event tap was enough to sometimes cause the events to arrive out of order. Um, so at that point I figured I've collected nearly something like 2 million key presses worth of data. Uh, it's kind of curious, but not worth it. So I reverted it and uh, now it remains kind of an academic exercise, uh, but it's one that I wanted to share with you. 
So thanks for watching. And uh, if you're interested in seeing more of this kind of stuff, just subscribe.